Hello and welcome to Marxism Today. I'm Red Wagner, joined by Tony Schmidt. And it's just us today. But today we're going to talk about Amazon. Baby, please don't go. Baby, please don't go. Baby, please don't go back to New Orleans. You know it I'd read a couple of articles in the, the local Madison paper, the Isthmus. Two of them were about Amazon, and I was like, eh, maybe we should talk about Amazon. I was sort of batting it around in my head, and then I saw this article from, oh, well, this is all the way back in October. So this has been a while kicking around in my head of whether or not we should do it. The BBC that was wondering whether or not Amazon is a story of capitalist success or capitalism's failures. Very interesting. Yeah, it's a. I don't think the article is that interesting, but the way they phrase that is just, you know, it's ripe for stuff. And the the Isthmus ones were basically it was two of them. One about Amazon just sort of being a quasi monopoly and forcing other people out, and the other one was, you know, since it's a local thing, a local piece about specifically people going around in, I don't remember what the term for it is, but where you go, like window shopping in a store and look up the price on Amazon, and if it's cheaper, you just buy it on Amazon. Mm -hmm. I'm sure there's a word for that, but I can't think of it. It's so easy to do, though, to like find something in the store, think, oh, this seems a little pricey, and if you have a phone that can look it up even, you can find out right then and there without even having to leave the store. And Amazon now makes their own phone that has a button that will allow you to scan a bar. You click the button, it brings it up where you can scan a barcode or search <laughs> it, and it will give you Amazon's listing for it. So Yeah, they know. Oh, yeah. That's why they did it. Yo, yeah, yeah, 100%. And that's... That's why I think I think they the answer I don't even remember what the answer they give to their thing other than it was disappointed on the BBC. Um but I, I think their answer is yes to both. Yeah. It is both it, an example of the best of capitalism and the worst of capitalism, which people need to realize are the same thing. That yes. That is really the Marxist point that because I I I felt as soon as you posed that question I thought to myself, Yep, it's both and it's not like both because of, you know, A qualifies for these things and B qualifies for these things. It's that the same thing that makes it a great example of capitalism is also what makes it a great example of the worst parts of capitalism. Yeah. It, it actually reminds me of a very short conversation I had with a coworker years ago who who had some qualms with Walmart, but uh, insisted to me that she believed that Walmart had a great business plan. <laughs> and I didn't get into the conversation because it was, clearly it was not shaping up to be a long conversation and anything that I said was just going to really leave it hanging or force it to be much longer than clearly anyone was prepared for this conversation <laughs> to be. But it's, you know, my point is and would have been, they're kind of one and the same, at least way more than I think she or many people are willing to admit. Oh, yeah. And I think, you know, bringing Walmart up is a good example. I mean, it's not just Amazon that does this. It's your Walmarts, your McDonald's to a certain extent. Uh, Google, Microsoft, at one point, I don't know, maybe still. Well, I think we should say some of the things that Amazon is doing, because we're kind of making generalizations about, like, why it's a bad example of capitalism and why it's a, or a good example of the worst things of capitalism or whatever, and and making comparisons. But we haven't mentioned what is Amazon up to besides, I guess, creating a phone where you can undercut other <laughs> merchants. Yeah. Well, I mean, do we need to explain what Amazon is? I guess is for maybe I guess for in case anyone is somehow listening to this on the internet and has not heard of Amazon. If that's, that's not too condescending not possible, to say. But 
We're an online vendor of everything now. Yeah. I mean, that's something that folks might not know. I mean, they started out with books, mm-hmm. but they sell everything. groceries and clothes. And, I think you can buy booze on there. Yeah. Probably children. I don't know. <laughs> I could look on the app that's installed on my phone that I cannot delete. Yeah. They're just the everything store now. Yeah, you can. It's yeah. It's it's an online store that had a main focus on books, but now yeah, sells everything. In fact, I don't know about what your experience is, but my experience is that recently, if I have Googled a commodity, you know, done a search engine search for a commodity that could be purchased, Amazon might not be the first hit, but it's on the first page. Amazon selling that thing. Like like uh, instrument strings, there are like instrument specialty online stores, several of them. But Amazon is one of the top hits for you know guitar strings. If you search for guitar strings, because they're everywhere, it's it's that way for everything. So full disclosure, I uh, I use Amazon a lot. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I, mean, I feel I, bad, but I mean, this goes back to your being a uh, being a Marxist is not like being a vegetarian comment from a while ago. Yep. Like, uh, yeah, I'm poor. I use Amazon a lot. My mom has Amazon Prime, and you can designate other people, so I don't pay shipping. Mm-hmm. Uh, so that being said, I don't think I've ever searched for something I've wanted to buy not in Amazon. Yeah, I mean, that's, <laughs> that's just how it is. I used Amazon this week, so yeah. But th- I, I I agree that it goes back to that point that we've made earlier. And in, in case you haven't listened to that episode, or or just as a reminder, the point is essentially that that living as a Marxist, living in a capitalist world, you're constantly being put into situations where you have to interact with a system that you don't morally support. And that's just something that Marxists live with. You can't be a Marxist like someone be a vegetarian. A vegetarian can choose not to participate in the consumption of meat and, and therefore you know, can, can live up to their own personal standards. Whereas what we believe as Marxists is about social relations between people. It's about how the world as a whole works. And so without changing the world, it's not like we can live in a different world. So we fight for a better world, but just a very simple, I need to buy my groceries and the pl- and the, any place in town that I'm going to buy groceries f- from is... A capitalist organization so i need to support a capitalist business simply just to eat yeah yeah it's always a painful thing like if i want to buy books amazon's normally the best place because i mean the other options that are nearby are barnes and noble and it's not like that's the small thing there's rainbow books which i should plug because yeah, you're in the they're Madison, wonderful Wisconsin area yeah downtown I'll have to see if they have a website and put it up, because hopefully they do, and you can order stuff online, and that's an alternate. But for, by and large, it's, yeah, I mean, for books, like, yeah, Amazon is, I also use the public library a lot. Mm -hmm. But anyway, yeah, full disclosure, I use Amazon a ton, all the time. Just to clarify, Rainbow Bookstore Cooperative, it's a cooperative, and it's a radical bookstore where you can get all sorts of socialists anarchist feminist stuff yeah that's a good place um yeah we'll have to find a link to put up so that people can look at it so we've defined amazon they yeah. sell everything online and they ship it usually for free yeah if you pay more for the prime or know somebody who has who loops you in even if you don't it only needs to be like 30 bucks or 35 or something like that. The order needs to only be a very small amount to get free shipping. Oh, really? Yeah. Hmm. That's that and it's been that way for before Prime existed. Oh, so yeah. See, I have I've used it more since I've been able to always get the free shipping. Uh, I I don't have Amazon Prime. I've never paid for shipping on Amazon. Nice. Hmm. Well, I don't pay for the Amazon Prime, so I guess I'm not too worried about it. <laughs> um Oh, you can't watch the videos if you aren't the one who's paying, which is kind of annoying. Oh, well, I can't watch them either. But yeah, that's the other thing they're doing, too, is the video streaming service. Yeah. And they have the audacity where you can listen to 
not unlimited number of audiobooks like it should be. You get a certain number per month based upon what you pay, which boggles my mind. There you have a thing, I don't remember what it's called, where you can get an unlimited amount of ebooks uh, per month. But they're, they didn't have anything very, or too much radical stuff, so that isn't terribly appealing, I don't think. <laughs> so I think I have to ask the question as part of this. What's wrong with Amazon? I mean, we gotta, we gotta say that. Because I think we've been working along that assumption, but we haven't stated it. So far, we've said they're a great place to get everything. Yeah. And free shipping. Yeah, which is true. I mean, maybe we should state that that's the good part of Amazon. They're a great place to get everything and free shipping. The problem is, they're a great place to get everything and have free shipping. <laughs> Meaning, all the other places that do that, whether they be big businesses, small businesses, local, cooperative, whatever else, aren't as good or easy or convenient and that means like i said the only place near me is oh i take that back there's a uh a half price books but growing up there was uh borders barnes and noble walden books just oh, yeah. nearby to me mm -hmm. um and now that's dropped to a barnes and noble uh so there isn't a lot and like yeah there's some small independent smaller independent stuff that's great to support if i come all the way downtown which i don't normally do mm -hmm. um unfortunately so it i mean and it's not just i mean that's just the booksellers but amazon is pretty ruthless about what they do like um i think in one of the articles uh in the isthmus that all hopefully link to if I can find them specifically mentioned about an online diaper sales thing. Cause, uh, as having a, uh, not yet potty trained three year old diapers are really expensive, mm -hmm. really expensive. It's not a pleasant expense and it's, it's just not great. So, uh, an online diaper retailer, I believe was their example came about to, you know, sell cheap diapers so Amazon started selling diapers even cheaper. Uh-huh. And the other company finally sold themselves to Amazon. And when they inquired, well, how on earth were you able to undercut our prices? And they said, simple, we took X million dollars in loss. Because we can afford to take this many millions of dollars in loss. Yeah, because they don't want to have competition. So yep. they might as well take a, a short-term loss to get rid of the competition exactly. for the foreseeable future. Yeah. This, this is, I think what we're really getting at is that what makes capitalism function is competition. It's questionably not capitalism if there's no competition. But what competition always leads to is someone is going to do better than someone else. I mean, that's kind of how competition works. And that's fine, except it means that you start out with many, many, many sellers. And eventually you get down to very, very few. To a, a virtual monopoly, if not an outright monopoly. And it's something that we've seen in lots of areas. That some, You know, I remember growing up, there were you know, six, seven, eight video rental stores. Anyone, my neighbor was going to start, going to open a video rental store because that was something you could do if you just happen to own a lot of VHS cassettes. You could open your own, you know, just rent a storefront and put them up on shelves and people rent them and give you money. And that's not a thing anymore. The, the, I mean, the, the it went from all of these little hometown ones to then there was a couple of different chain ones, and now there's one chain one and Netflix. Redbox. And, oh, yeah, and Redbox, yeah. And it, it sounds like Amazon's trying to cut into the Netflix area. Yep. Netflix might be too well-established. Who knows? I don't know where it'll go. But, I mean, that's what's happening is we're taking s something where there were a whole bunch of small local things and consolidating it down to bigger and bigger single capitalist entities which leads to something that 
you know, Marxist critique, but even people that support capitalism, even people that believe capitalism is the best thing in the world, say that monopolies are bad. Right. Because they don't realize capitalism leads to monopolies. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so I think it kind of makes that point, and therefore Amazon, like we said, is a really great example of that, of a group that's figured out how to do capitalism really, really well, and also highlights all of the problems with it because then all of the small stores that used to sell all the little gifts and books and all the different stuff that Amazon sells, they're going out of business. Many of them are. I mean, some oh, yeah. aren't, some are. But with, with as time goes on, more and more will go out of business, most likely, if things keep going the way they are. Oh, yeah. And the way Amazon is... Well, actually, here, let me jump back to one thing. With monopolies, if you're not convinced that capitalism creates monopolies in, like, a market situation, play the game Monopoly. Someone will end up with all the money, and everybody else will end up with none of the money. That's how the game works, and that's how capitalism works. Like, that's a pretty easy way to prove that point. You even all start out on equal footing, and it, it still ends up that way. But the other problem is the way Amazon runs its businesses is that they have I don't know how many employees but not many the, most of the work gets done in the warehouses and the warehouse employees are not Amazon employees they're through temp agencies and other sort of contractor things which means they get no benefits no health care insurance anything like that they get paid probably the minimum market value which is probably about minimum wage I could be wrong on that though no, they are not well paid. No. And when coming to or when leaving work, they have to stand in a line to be padded down to make sure they're not stealing things, which can take up to an hour and a half. And the Supreme Court recently ruled that that's okay and that they do not need to be compensated for the amount of time they must mandatorily spend to be degraded as humans and accused of being thieves after doing their capitalist honest day's work. Yep. This this was big news. I was flabbergasted when I heard it. And oh. I think the average amount of time I've heard was close to half an hour, like yeah. 27 minutes. But Yeah, I think yeah. an hour and a half was the extreme end. But this is, it's, this is not like driving to work or something like that. Yeah, everyone needs to drive to work. Your employer doesn't pay you for that. This is something the employer has specifically decided to do. To have these pat-down stations that are not highly manned, that, you know, have long lines, therefore, because they don't have enough security guards working them. It's something entirely created by the employer because of the job. And you don't have to pay the worker for that time, is what the Supreme Court has decided. And their reasoning is that that is not the defined work that they were hired for. Yeah. Which to me is a little bit scary. Oh, yeah. And the reason it's scary is because everyone has time at their job, or maybe maybe not everyone, I guess, you know, there might be some exceptions, but many of us have time at our job where we need to be there, we're paid for being there, but we're not doing the primary thing that we were hired for doing. It might be that you are a checkout clerk and no one is in your line right now. Based on the Supreme Court decision, do you not get paid during that time? That's, I mean, maybe there's a distinction I'm not picking up here, and hopefully there is. But it seems like they have set a, an extreme anti-worker precedent with this ruling. Oh, no, I think it's even worse than that, because I think that leaves the door open for your boss to go, hey, I know you just beg groceries, but hop on that cashier re cash register, and let me show you how to use that. Oh, by the way, you're not getting paid for this, but go ahead and try and leave. You're fired if you do. Because mm -hmm. that's the other thing, is that if you're not getting paid for it, you, they're still compelled to be there. They can't. Like, it's not like they can go, well, no, you can't pat me down. Then I'm leaving. Yeah. And it's... So, you can still be fired for not doing something you're not being paid to do. 
I think a lot of employment stuff have things like that in there that normally don't get challenged. Like I know when I worked for the city of Sun Prairie, it was written in my contract that I could be fired for any activity or behavior unbecoming like of a city employee. Yeah, that's that was the definition was unbecoming like of a city employee. That is that's very a... common for government positions. Yeah, but I mean that's they could fire me for doing this podcast if they wanted to. Mm-hmm. They could fire me for voting for a Democrat or a Republican or not voting or just anything you know, like the yeah. the ability of anyone to have that in a contract is scary. But the ability to yeah compel people to do well, it's basically. Oh, no, I'm going to make a big jump. They're basically trying to relay, re-legalize slave labor. Because, In the sense that it's labor that you're not paid for? Yeah. I mean, they might not be actively doing something, but they're compelled to be there without being able to leave. And they're not required to be compensated for that. I'm not going to go as far as calling it slave labor. In no, this... it sort of opens a door, though with their justification of it. I would say that it legalizes wage theft. Yeah. Which, I think you could argue wage theft is a form of slavery. Because you're making people do work you're not paying them for, and what do you call people who do work for you, but you don't pay them? I I guess there's ownership is the difference. Yeah. See, I reserve the word slavery when you get to own a human being. Yeah. that's not happening here. Well... How many of them, though, have to work these jobs because they have too much credit card debt or something? I mean, we don't have debtors' prisons anymore, supposedly, but people are still thrown in jail for not paying their debts illegally. Yeah, and I'm not saying that there's not a lot of similarities. (laughs) I mean, if we want to talk similarities, that's, I mean, that's one of the basic understandings of Marxism is everyone knows... That slavery was an exploitative relationship because the slaves didn't get the the output of their labor. And, and Marxism comes along and says, ah, you know, that same thing is happening with the workers who work for the capitalist. Yes, they get a wage, but the great mass of wealth accumulated by the capitalist is largely produced by the workers thus drawing the parallel between the two. So I'm not here to say that there are no parallels between it, but... Yes, it's hyperbolic to call it slavery, but it's worrisome. Yes. It's very worrisome. Um, so that's how Amazon operates its business. I guess I assume the rest of the people are just in a corporate office somewhere, probably making deals and figuring out the supply situation and logistics and whatnot i mean they don't do their own deliveries except except oh and this is another thing uh, where we sort of hit on automation is they're starting was it in new york they're going to start to roll this out if they haven't already their drone fleet of delivery for things that are less than five pounds i remember hearing about that a while ago that they were going to do do that but i haven't heard anything about it recently yeah is it I, going forward it's Last I heard, they were still going forward with it. It might have been this year they were going to roll that out. But, I mean, there you're not only taking out, again, jobs from the places that would normally supply that stuff, but you're also taking out the jobs of the delivery people. Mm -hmm. Because I imagine UPS and FedEx uh, and even the post office, because a lot of those packages get handed off to the post office to then Mm -hmm. to their final destination. Like they must get a huge amount of business from that. And to be able to cut them out, well, one, save Amazon a ton of money. Mm -hmm. And two, if UPS and FedEx are no longer getting all... Actually, it might even be mostly just UPS that gets this stuff. I don't even know. I, I don't, I'm not sure. Um, but if Amazon does handles all their own delivery, I guarantee there will not be UPS and FedEx. They're one of those companies, if not... Well, probably one of them will go out of business, if not both or yeah. something, because maybe Amazon will just take over the delivery business of parcels as well. I mean, yeah. if they can do it cheaply, it's... Yeah, they they seem to have proven that they are very willing to 
try out brand new things to to move into other markets and i don't i don't know if they'll go as far as parcel delivery but there's no reason to think they wouldn't yeah well i mean i wonder what percentage of parcel delivery stuff accounts for their business anyway like what percent of the parcel delivery business is amazon supplying probably a lot yeah so well, they might just limp into it because they might be doing the majority of it anyway if they do their own i was gonna say probably a lot especially of consumer products mm-hmm. yeah i don't know that businesses use amazon maybe maybe not yeah i think i think businesses the only thing i can think of is my wife worked at uh the uh uw eau claire uh bookstore and i know they purchase stuff through the publishers for that so yeah, it'd probably be still the retail outlets that existed that would be using those other things. But yeah, I, I mean, but that's you know that's sort of the monster of which capitalism creates is this multi. It's like a hydra, I mean, except you don't need to cut off its head; it just keeps growing more. <laughs> and I think this ties in really nicely with some of our technology episodes that we've had oh yeah because finding a way to deliver a package automatically there's nothing wrong with that that's great that's a wonderful achievement for the human race however the way that we'll handle it in a capitalist society is you know like you said probably ups or whoever might go out of business the 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 post office might have an awful time having to handle the, the loss of business that they used to get. A bunch of people will lose their jobs and not be, you know, from no fault of their own. You know, they may have done a great job delivering packages, but the, you know, the economy at, at large just changed. And so, you know, people will be told that they're not valued anymore and you know, have to go on unemployment and, and search for another job that may not pay as well. And, you know, all of the problems that come from that. So there's always a double-edged sword in capitalism where this wonderful thing is going to cause a lot of pain for some people. Yeah. Instead of, here's another use for that stuff, FEMA coming up with a delivery system where they can just fly a cargo plane with this full of tens of thousands of drones Fly, you know, like uh, the Haitian earthquake that was so bad, I don't know, five, six years ago. Mm-hmm. Fly a several cargo, you know, dozen cargo planes over 100,000 drones. Just fly out, seek people. Here's food. Here's clean water. Here's, you know, some basic medical supplies. Like, that would be a phenomenal use for that technology. You know, imagine how you could revolutionize disaster relief. Mm-hmm. Or like thinking in a socialist society... I mean, does that, natural disasters are something you're not going to get rid of. So, I mean, that would be a perfect use for something like that. Yeah. Is, where well, I mean, just the rapid response and delivery of things like that. It would be phenomenal and you'd save hundreds of thousands of lives. Yeah. Or we could, yeah, undercut competitors with it. <laughs> Cut out a link in the supply chain. I mean, it's, it also makes sense. It's, I think, worth looking a little bit at, uh, Volume 2 of Capital, where Marx really hits up on the distribution of commodities, where, you know, it's talking about, essentially, you, you know, that's where all these just-in-time systems come from, that they're not directly from Marx, although that is, that is the part of Marx where people actually give him, where bourgeois economists actually give him credit for is in this field. But, I mean, that's, you know, it's basically that the longer you have products sit, the more money you're losing in that product. So, I mean, that's, it's exactly, I think David Harvey calls it the annihilation of uh, space with time, I think is how he normally refers to it. Yeah. You make things go faster and faster and faster and, you know, try and get rid of the distances have to cover and whatnot. Yeah. Or the time it sits on the shelves and the space that it needs to occupy there. Again, 
just the difference between a, what a socialist society and a capitalist society would do. It's it's startling, I think, because it's like if you had first invented the the syringe and you put it in front of a Marxist and a capitalist, and the Marxist goes, oh my god, we could deliver so much medicine with this. And the capitalist goes, or we could poison people with this. You know, <laughs> that's, again, pretty hyperbolic, but, you know, it's the... <laughs> yeah, because a capitalist wouldn't be necessarily interested in poisoning people. They just say, how can I sell as many of these as, as I can? Oh, if we put heroin in it, or yeah. I don't know what people use it you know, <laughs> for. I probably have that all wrong. Do you cook heroin i don't know what you do but yeah put it put some addictive drug in it i'll say that uh, yes heroin i believe is injected. shot up yeah okay. injected yeah i mean that's not that you know every per everyone that believes in capitalism would sink to that level but that that is a a, a thought that makes sense in the logic of capitalism i think i would disagree with you there okay the salt sugar fat book Mm -hmm. uh, I know the crack people head on this a lot, but just, you know, that the, a lot of the food companies have figured out what it is that we, mm -hmm. you know, the amount of salt we like and the amount of, you know, fat and sweet. Because, I mean, it. I guess I don't know exactly where salt comes in uh, for our stuff, but biologically, sweet and fat are where it's at because things that taste sweet and fatty taste good to us because... You know, when we were hunter and gatherers, when we were still evolving for things, yeah. that is what we desperately wanted because things that had fat and were sweet were yeah. things that gave us massive amounts of calories. Is, yeah, high is, and dense calories. Yep, high dense calories, which is what you need when you're trying to survive. Mm -hmm. But since we stopped evolving, once we started surviving, we still crave those things, even yeah. though we don't need them. Yeah, they, I mean, they've used our our biology, which has come from that historical perspective like you mentioned being hunters and gatherers that need to maximize caloric intake that's where we've come from but they've used the science behind that to basically turn it into a science of addiction oh yeah and it's you know it's other stuff the cracked people hit on this i'll have to find the episode and put it up i can't think of it off the top of my head but about this you know the the random sort of reward for stuff i think they were talking about uh, uh apps on the phone like the it's basically the same as going into a slot machine and pumping in your quarters and pulling the lever except you don't get any money back with the apps and a lot of them they want you to pay a little money to get oh oh you're out of lives so why don't you pay us pay us a buck it's just a buck come on pay us a buck it's it's exactly the same thing and it's yeah. terrifying so i guess i wouldn't say that not all capitalism would sink to that just not well, in the it, same it, it, same level of devastation that, like, heroin causes. Well, the interesting thing is that... Necessary. Not all, capitalism, not all capitalists do sink to that. There are capitalists out there that say, I want to deliver healthy food, or I want to deliver an enriching, non-addictive game that's, that's not asking you for money. There are people out there that want to do that, and that's wonderful. One of the problems with capitalism, though, is... If somebody does that thing that we don't believe in, that thing that's a little bit shady, that thing that we think is just a little bit too far, as long as it's not illegal, that person gets an advantage in the market. And they get to expand their power and expand their business when they have that advantage, which gives them a greater one, and they can expand further. You can have one capitalist that's willing to play dirty and 99 that aren't, and guess what? That one is going to be the one that is running Amazon. Yep. <laughs> and, if you're the... and all the rest of the ones are the ones that have the small mom and pop shops that are going to go out of business because Amazon is selling cheaper than them. Yeah. Or they're compelled to do it. It's the course of laws of competition, mm -hmm. to use the nice Marxist term, because I like that. Yeah. What to do about Amazon? Because, I mean, you could try and organize a boycott, but the best you could affect with a boycott is maybe benefits for the workers at the factories or something like that. I don't think you would be able to gain enough support for a boycott to shut Amazon down. There are going to be too many people who do it. 
I think the most you could do, uh, you know, unions or something like that. At this point, I think it just needs to be awareness. Like, we're, I don't think we're anywhere near a boycott. I don't think we're anywhere near having a union for, for Amazon workers. But people need to basically just know the stuff that we talked about on this episode and, and further happenings with Amazon. You know, I think these are the kind of things that people need to know about and think about. The Like the fast food workers fight for $15 an hour. That's something that has gained momentum. And, it, you know, it started with a lot of stuff uh, just circulating through, you know, people sharing stuff on Facebook or whatever about what it's like to try to live on minimum wage and how much the profits of, you know, McDonald's are compared to, you know, how much they pay their employees. Like, there was a lot of stuff like that that went on before the fight for 15 could really take off. And it remains to be seen if that, you know, what's going to come out of Fight for 15. I mean, I think maybe some small victories have happened already. Seattle got it. Um, mm-hmm. California might have passed uh, I th- several places. I think place... it was like certain cities in California. Was it okay? Maybe. Yeah, there have but, definitely been victories. But, so. Yeah, and we should probably do a full episode on that too. Oh, yeah. But... The I guess my point is the there's a right time for these different strategies. And I think where we're at with Amazon right now is basically still just trying to raise awareness of, of what's going on. Because I think a boycott, if it got to the level of maybe it needs to be even bigger than Fight for 15. You know, it needs to be extremely well known and well understood and then if a boycott could happen if it were if you could get 20% of amazon purchasers to boycott amazon i think that would be enough to affect some level of change yeah but we're right now the number of people that know about these kind of things and care about these kind of things and would actually actively join this is probably well under 1% oh yeah it and and I'm not saying that it can't grow. I think there's probably lots of people out there that would or could care about this if if it started to bubble up and if they heard about it and, and all that. So share this podcast. <laughs> Actually, that's a good transition because we wanted to talk about our uh, new subreddit. So on reddit.com, we have created a subreddit for Marxism Today. I'll tell you the address of it. www.reddit.com slash r, that's the letter r, slash Marxism Today, all one word. That's our subreddit. We'll post our episodes there where you can comment on them, leave comments for us, and you can also post things that you think would be interesting to for me or Tony to view or other listeners to the podcast. We're, we'd really like to hear from folks. We've been watching our, our numbers and our stats, and we can see that it seems there's a lot of traction uh, for the podcast recently. But we don't know very much about who's listening or what you want to know. So drop us a line. Leave a comment. Let us know uh, what you'd like to hear, what questions you might have. If, if there are certain topics that you'd like us to discuss, we'd love to hear from you about that. Anything I forgot? <laughs> no, I think, I think you hit that pretty well. Okay. I'm curious to know who listens to us. Yeah, me too. This episode is part of the Marxism Today podcast series. Marxism Today is recorded, mixed, edited, produced, and maintained by Tony Schmidt and Red Wagner. 
It is distributed freely and licensed under the Creative Commons Attribution Non-Commercial Sharealike 3.0 license. To find out more about the Marxism Today podcast, visit our website at marxismtodaypodcast.wordpress.com, where you can find archives of all of our episodes available for download. Thanks for listening, and we'll see you next time.